Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at thestarcitygames.com Season 3 Invitational. I'm Nick Miller alongside Jim Davis. How you doing, sir? Doing pretty good. Always good to see you here at the Invitational. You've locked up your Players' Championship berth long ago. Long ago, But you're still yes. here playing, and yes. you got a pretty cool brew for us. A little Soul Tide Dells. This deck's sweet. Um, so I've worked on this deck for the past few weeks, and it's just really cool. I'm not exactly sure how like good it is yet. I know it's good. I'm not sure if it's like format crushing good. Right. But the deck is sweet, and it plays basically all the good packages in Standard in one. It has the Raptor package with Den Protector. It has a Jace. It has Languish. It has kind of all the things that decks do put in one. Um, but yeah, it's pretty sweet. So. A couple weeks ago, we saw an Abzan Delve build like this pop up at the top eight of a Premier IQ, mm. uh, more of a aggro based deck, but then is using all the Delve cards to do again what you're doing here right. with Gurmag Angler and Tassiger. You've kind of shifted that to a soul type package here. You have a little more of a controlling element with Languish. Mm -hmm. You got a Torment ele Torn Elemental and then some Murderous Cuts along with Jace. Right. You know, what's your route to victory here? And you know, where's the place in this the metagame for this deck? Yeah, so this, this, this deck was based off of the, uh, the Pro Tour deck. It was like John Delve, but it was playing uh, Flame Wake Phoenixes as your like payoff for cards in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And it had like four Angler, three Tassiger, and four Languish. So it was all big butts, big Delve guys, and then the graveyard with the Phoenix. But the Phoenix was terrible because you couldn't actually cast it. Okay. The deck had, it actually had three mountains in it, and that was it. <laughs> so like, I liked that deck a lot. The deck was really cool. I think Jerry posted it in one of his daily decks, and I was like, ah, that deck's really cool. But it didn't seem like it really was there yet, and I felt the red part didn't work, and I was looking for other colors to do. White was an option. You, you could you get Siege Rhino. Sure. But the blue just seemed like it was just too good. I mean, we get Jace. Originally, Stubborn Denial was the card that I thought would be really, really good, but it ended up working its way out of a deck because the, the, the Delve creatures aren't that reliable without, like, modern and legacy type of uh, right. card manipulation. So I kind of fell into the, uh, the Sultai version. I added the, the uh, Raptor and Den Protector package, which wasn't in that deck. And the deck's cool because it... It plays kind of a lot of different angles. You can kind of play an aggressive draw where you have like a turn three angler, turn four Tassiger. You can have draws where you languish them off of that, so you're kind of being controlling as well. Obviously, Raptor's great in late games. Um, it's the best Jace deck, like, by far. Like, if you have a Jace on turn two and it lives, it's going to flip turn three 95% of the time. Oh, yeah, I can see opening hands you're trying to draw up here where you can see that you have a languish and you kind of have a controlling path, you know, maybe far off one of your gathers or communes or something, right. kind of wait around, sweep the board, then get into action. Well, usually, because usually what you end up doing is you almost always cast a Delve guy on turn three. And then, like, that's perfect because they're going to play some stuff. You go, oh, wow, he's a big guy, and then you languish them. And um, there's definitely a lot, a lot of surprise factor here, which is pretty cool, too, because people right. don't expect language out of this deck. And um, but at the same time, if they, don't, if they play back, then you have a big guy in play. So you can kind of big guy pressure, play another big guy, keep delving. And um, I mean, the more time you have, the more you can cast your communes and your gathers. Gathers, one of the best cards in the deck by far. Gather gets, it, it should get two creatures most of the time. You whiff sometimes, because there's 24 creatures in the deck. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, you only get one occasionally. But whenever you get two, it's like a dark ritual draw two. Right. It's insane, it's very, very good. And you got pretty good hits here with Gather too. I mean, you're oh, gonna absolutely. get something like Dim Protector, which gets you more value, or a right. Jace, or even one of your big fatties. So you're always gonna be coming up big when you hit on that card. Right, like there, you have some insane turns in the mid game where like you'll gather for like a Tassig or an Angler and just cast both of them. Like, you know, and that's four mana for nine power, which is pretty now, good. A couple of questions. When you look at a build like this, firstly, there's no dig through time, which is kind of a big card in the delve scheme. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, are you competing too much with your graveyard when you're looking to kind of use Jace's flip side mm -hmm. and all of the other delve components? See, that's what I thought at first. I figured when I was considering blue as a possible splash color, I thought Stubborn Denial was the good card. And Jace is like, eh, Jace is fine. Because you're right, you're going to be emptying your graveyard a lot. How good would Jace be? But Jace has been so good because you get so many options with your graveyard. It's sort of like Snapcaster, where like you end up milling a language at some point. And if your Jace ever flips, which it usually does, you just have access to language the entire game. Mm -hmm. So it really changes how the games play. I've seen the Murderer's Cut, too. Murderer's Cut's great. You end up where like you cut something for one mana and then flash it back with Jace or whatever. So Jace has been much, much better than I thought it was. And it went from being like sort of a toss in to the stubborn denial blue plan to one of the main parts of the entire deck. That's right. kind of the, the story of Jace. Everyone's just kind of been like, all right, we'll try it out in this deck. Right. We'll try it yeah, out in this deck. And then it's become, no, Jace is just insane. Right, it's very, very good. And like I said, this is by far the best Jace deck. It's not close. Right. Like well, the, the main deck looks pretty solid here. The sideboard, you got some pretty good options as well. You got Thoughtseize, Feed the Clans. These things were pretty apparent. Right. But you also got some other good synergies. You got uh, Whip here. Mm -hmm. Of course, your graveyard's going to be full all the time. It's actually the, the, it's the front half of Whip that I like a lot. Uh, I was talking to Jerry about trying to beat Manus Rider. 
Um, the Jeska has a pretty tough matchup. Manus Rider, decks that can kind of fly over you mm -hmm. and kind of like tempo you, out tempo you while you're trying to do their stuff are pretty good against you. And the whip actually just lets you race them. So you have Feed the Clans, which are good as well, but the whip lets you just have a big guy race. And then obviously later in the game, if things slow down, you whip, whip stuff back. Also insane with Jace, because mm -hmm. you can whip, whip Jace back and then flip it immediately, it stays in play, which is really cool. So the Jace is like, Jace, the, uh, the whip is like more of a life gain card, sure. but has other applications as well. So the vampiric link for your team. Right. Which, which is some added value. Right, right. Okay. Got some cool one ofs here. You know, back to nature, gonna blow out if the you know, Constellation decks are still around, right. or possibly Heroic, Rex Sage. This one, I feel like Dark Betrayal didn't get enough play. We saw it back right. in the day when Mono Black Devotion was ruling everything. Right, right. This card's kind of fallen out of favor. Right. Against Abzan, they have eight important card against, cards against you, and they're all black. Mm -hmm. It's Force Siege Rhino and four Anafenza. You must kill Anafenza. Anafenza's not as backbreaking to this deck as you think it would be. Because a lot of times, it's good against the Raptor part of the deck, but when, you're, when you cast Commune with the Gods, typically you hit one or two creatures, and you take the one you want, that's, that's it. You're still delving, so it doesn't, it doesn't slow you down that much, but um, you really got to kill it anyway. It's, it's still very good against you, so Betrayal is the best way to kill that for one mana. Um, having the, the variety pack of sort of like cheap spells is great with Den Protector. You see, you see so many cards every game. Like, having a Back to Nature in your sideboard, just one, probably improves your Constellation matchup by like 20%. Because sure. eventually you will find it and you will cast it. So, um, and the, the other good one up here is Salungar. Salungar was in the main deck for a bit. I decided to run it on the board. It's very, very good against Elspeth, obviously, but also all the hanger back walkers yeah. and random tokens. It's very, very good. Yeah. So. All the decks seem to be slipping one of these in right. just for hanger back walker. Right. So. Like, I consider playing Esper Dragons for this tournament, and I, I wrote about it. I was pretty close to playing it, but I decided to, to play this deck instead because Slung Guard just seems so good. Okay. That's why he was in the main, but I decided he was better off in the sideboard. I felt, I felt like Torrent Elemental was a better big card in the main. So, after a tournament of playing with it, what are your thoughts going forward? Any changes? Um, I like the deck a lot. I went uh, through one yesterday. I lost the Devotion in the last round. He had a really, really good hand game three, and I still almost won. But um, I was ha very happy with my, my sideboard plan against Devotion, which is the thought season and the strokes, taking out the Raptors. Um, today I've lost, unfortunately, twice. I lost Jeskai last round, and then Abzan last round. I mean, I mulliganed a lot. It was two pretty rough matches. Um, I like the deck a lot. I'm not... I'm still trying to figure out. I feel like it's like 90% of the way there. I feel like I'm missing a little something. I'm not exactly sure. And... It's almost there. Yeah, it's, definitely, it's definitely very powerful. Like these, you, you have some games where you flip Jason turn three, delve, play a huge guy, and like your opponent has like a fleece main line at play. You feel like you're playing Legacy. You know, but that, that needs a little more consistency, which I'm not exactly sure how to do yet. Because the, the tension is you need to play creatures for your spells. You need to play spells to get your creatures. <laughs> you know, and then you um, also have other spells you want to put in the deck as well. Like right. You need to have some removal spells in this format and so on. So. Well, it'll give you something to write about this week on StarCityGames.com, I'm sure. Definitely, definitely. Jim, thanks for joining me here on the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in New Jersey.